everyone, welcome to Fish On Alberta. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you some of my favorite fly fishing books and magazines, and some of the books that helped me get started when I first got into fly fishing. Let's start things off with the Little Red Fishing Knot Book. Now, I've seen a lot of books on knot tying, and this has to be one of the best. It's very informative, it's full of great illustrations, and it's full of detailed knots, probably more than you'll ever need. It's also small enough that you can keep it in your pocket or in your truck. I believe it's worth keeping on hand and you can pick it up at most outdoor sport retailers. Next, we have Matching the Hat by Pat O'Reilly. Now if you've ever struggled to identify flies, or you're just not sure how to pick an imitation, then this could be the book for you. Just keep in mind sometimes matching the hatch has little to do with an actual hatch at all. For example, the spinner when a mayfly dies and hits the water. I also believe there are times where there's a lot more to it than just matching the hatch, but this is definitely a good start. The photographs are great quality, it's full of useful information. It's also another small book that you can keep in the pocket or the truck. Definitely worth keeping close by. And I'll definitely be doing a video in the future on the fundamentals of matching the hatch. Okay, next on the list we have Fish of Alberta. Now this book has great images and great descriptions about a number of fish you'll encounter throughout the province. Now when I read this book from front to back, I felt about 75% of this book is non-game species. So I'm talking a lot of bait fish and such which I believe can be valuable information in itself. And for this reason, say you're on the water and you're thinking about chucking some streamers, <clears throat> I think it would be a great asset to know where you should toss that streamer, what color it should be, or even what time of year to use it. What is it that Terry Grant used to say on Man Tracker all the time? Know your land, know your prey. Well, this book can tell you all about your prey and your prey's prey and so on and so forth. It can help you determine where a certain bait fish lives, what color it is, what time of year it'll be around. So definitely uh, a book worth keeping on hand. And it also covers all the game fish in the province. So definitely worth keeping on the shelf. Fish of Alberta. Now we got a book I picked up in some rinky-dink gas station somewhere in the Crow's Nest Pass. This is called Guide to Aquatic Insects and Crustaceans. This book can help you learn more about the insects and crustaceans that live in freshwater streams, lakes, or rivers. It covers things like mayflies, stoneflies, caddisflies, water bugs, crayfish, and freshwater shrimp. This handy guide can allow you to make quick identifications in the field. It's definitely another book I recommend keeping in your truck. You never know when you might come across an alien critter and you need some quick help. Okay, now we have Essential Fly Fishing by Tom Mead. This is actually one of the first fly fishing books I ever picked up. Um, I drove the Red Deer to meet someone and they were pretty late getting there so I jumped into chapters and I saw this on sale so I grabbed it and uh, gave it a read while I waited for this person. This is another excellent book on the basics of fly fishing. I mean it's definitely not going to get you into anything ad advanced but it does explain the fundamentals of choosing tackle, casting a fly line, and deceiving a variety of fish. If you ever come across this book in your travels, I'd suggest picking it up and see for yourself. Okay, now I'm going to show you folks some of my favorite fly fishing books. And we'll start with Blue Ribbon Bow and Trout Streams of Alberta by Jim McLennan. I cannot say enough good things about Jim McLennan. The work him and his wife do is amazing, and their music is pretty good. Jim has been an active outdoor writer for over 40 years and he was actually one of the first fly fishing guides on the Bow River. And the neat fact is the first edition of Blue Ribbon Bow received the Outdoor Writers of Canada Book of the Year Award and Trout Streams of Alberta is a national bestseller which earned him the Andy Russell Nature Writing Award, which is pretty neat. In Blue Ribbon Bow, Jim traces the ancient glacial origins of the bow all the way till today. 
and Trout Streams of Alberta contains information on trout species, trout habitat, requirements, as well as many different fly patterns. There's a chapter on each watershed in Alberta highlighting the history, the fish, and the fishing methods and access. I absolutely love these books for a number of reasons. The stories alone are worth the read. I believe my buddy James finished reading Trout Streams of Alberta and he liked it. So these are two books I definitely recommend adding to the fly fishing library. Another one of my favorite books is The Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing by Tom Rosenbauer. I actually have two copies of this book. I keep one in my truck and another at home. This book is filled with a lot of trustworthy information. And it covers almost everything from rods and reels to lines, leaders, still water, salt water. It has hundreds and hundreds of flies. and includes presentation and striking as well as landing a fish. And it even talks about new techniques like tenkara and check nymphing. Now Tom Rosenbauer has been a fly fisher for four decades. And you'll definitely hear me mention his name more than a few times in future episodes. I feel this book is great for the beginner or the advanced fly fisher. It has a little of everything to keep you from looking foolish on the water. Orvis also has a bunch of other books out there. I would recommend them all. They're pretty informative and will definitely help you with whatever you're up to on the water. There is also a YouTube series of the same name which I'll talk about more in future episodes. Now we have My Bull River by Barry White. Another amazing fly fisher and great book. Barry has been guiding anglers on the bow since 1977. And a pretty cool fact is in 1992, Barry received basic casting instructor certification at the Federation of Fly Fishers show in Calgary. Then in 1995, he was certified as a master fly casting instructor, the first person certified to that level in Alberta. His book talks about some of the challenges when fishing the Bow River, and one of my favorite chapters in this book is called Listening, where he discusses how important it can be just to stop, look around, and admire where you are when you're on the water. This book would absolutely make a good addition to any fly fishing library, and Barry is still offering guided trips, and you can contact him if you head over to bowriver.com. This one may seem like a bit of a trick, but this is quite an informative book, packed with a lot of great tips. This actually turned out to be a pretty good read. Personally, I love all the Field and Stream books, mainly because of all the illustrations. This book is great for a novice angler looking to get their feet wet. It has a wealth of information and a simple, colorful layout of short reads. This book is not laid out like a conventional book with pages upon pages of text. It has a lot of thumbnails and diagrams. There is no doubt anyone from a beginner to even a seasoned fly fisherman will gain something from this book. Definitely another book I suggest keeping on the fly fishing shelf. Now this next book may cause some of you to drool. And in spite being published nearly 20 years ago, Alberta's Trout Highway Fishing the Forestry Trunk Road by Barry Mitchell it is very sought after by a lot of people. However, it's only found by few and expensive for those who manage to find one. One of my favorite things about this book is all the stories in the first half. There is also a special illustration on page 102 of Mitchell's Bastardized Nail Knot. But for that, you'll have to find a copy or find someone who has a copy to be able to see that masterpiece. A fun fact is Barry was recognized in 1998 and awarded the Order of the Bighorn, one of Alberta's highest conservation honors. Another good piece of knowledge is in 1971, Barry founded the Alberta Fishing Guide magazine with his father George. Barry and his wife Anne then took sole ownership of the magazine in 1980 and together they published it for more than 40 years. 
In 2013, when they found out Barry was ill, they sold it. I have no clue who the current owners are, but I believe it has something to do with the publishers of Alberta Outdoorsman. But don't quote me on that just yet. <clears throat> you can pick this guide up at most Canadian tires as well as the Fish and Hole. A new edition of this magazine is still published every spring. And you will be surprised to find an extensive list of water bodies and directions to them. And what species you can find swimming the depths. He is definitely one fly fisher I wish I could have met. <clears throat> one person he mentions a fair bit in his book is Don Anderson, another legend in his own right. I believe Don is still active on the Alberta Outdoorsman Forums and is definitely another fly fisher I would love to meet, possibly to pick his brain on the Missouri River incident on page 114. But if you can't seem to find a edition of Alberta's Trout Highway, which is hard enough to get, you can pick up Barry Mitchell's Alberta Fishing Guide. So, best of luck to you in your search. Now we have another good source of information, the Alberta Outdoorsman magazine. <clears throat> Alberta Outdoorsman covers a whole range of news, issues, and events that surround hunting, fishing, and trapping in Alberta. They even have a recipe of the month at the back of each issue. Subscriptions can be purchased online and are also processed through PayPal. A one-year subscription is 38 bucks. A two-year, I believe, is 70 And they even offer a one-year subscription for U.S. residents for 125 bucks. Now, if you have the internet, you can also take advantage of the Alberta Outdoorsman Forums, which is completely free to sign up, but I'll get in that a bit more in another episode when I go over websites and social media. Another series of books I recommend keeping on hand are the Backroad Map Books. These books in my opinion are an amazing tool to have. They're much more than just maps. They also include fishing and hunting areas, camping sites, hiking trails, and so much more. They will also tell you what species are in most lakes and when it comes to discovering new places these books open up a whole new world, from clean and clear mountain streams and alpine lakes of the Rockies to large twisting rivers of the prairies. Alberta Backroad Map Books have detailed descriptions for hundreds of fishing spots. Feel free to check them out at your local outdoor retailer. Now for all you fly tires out there, or even the folks who are looking to get into fly tying, I know there are a lot of different fly tying books out there, <clears throat> and all are a great place to start. However, I'm going to share with you guys just two of my go-to books I use for creating flies. The first one I do not have in my possession, as I have loaned it to my wonderful neighbor Jeff, an inspired fly tire himself, so I will throw it up on the screen here, The Fly Tying Bible. <clears throat> This book provides clear pictures and step-by-step -step instructions on how to create hundreds of flies from dries to wets to streamers and nymphs. This book also gives you information like which tools or materials you'll need, the type of fish you can expect to catch with each type of fly, and how difficult each fly is to create. There is even a bit of information about the fish themselves in this book. I feel the fly tying bible is very helpful for the beginner tire looking to grasp the fundamentals. With all that said, I absolutely recommend keeping this book near your bench. Okay, now we have Stillwater Solutions Recipes. This book was written by two of North America's legendary Stillwater fly fishermen, Brian Chan and Phil Rowley. This book is easy to read and understand, and it also has a folding stand and a spiral binding, which makes it easy to set up while you're on the bench. Overall, it is a good book of recipes with a nice layout. I wouldn't call it great. Phil Rowley's Fly Patterns for Still Waters book is far superior to this one. However, I love using this book for a quick reference. It does recommend using still water solutions fly tying material for certain flies however it's getting exceedingly expensive 
So all you need to do is a little bit of research to see what substitutes you can use. And though this book doesn't necessarily have detailed pictures, it does have a fairly detailed step-by-step -step instruction. So if you're sitting at the bench and you're not sure what to tie, just give this a quick flip and I'm sure you'll find something worth tying in here. I have many other fly tying books, I just find I use these two the most. So a few other books I would like to mention which I currently do not have in my possession at the moment. Um, but I have read, you know, that's what friends are for. Uh, throw them up on the screen here. First we have Morrison Chan um, Fly Fishing Trout Lakes by Skip Morris and Brian Chan. Uh, this is a very useful book for both beginner and experienced fly fishers. It's full of a lot of different information like uh, fishing techniques, productive flies, reading the water, casting knots, tackle, float tubes, boats, entomology, and even safety. So if you find this book in your travels, I would recommend picking it up and keeping it on a shelf. Uh, next we have Dynamic Nymphing by George Daniel. Now this is a unique book that covers things from advanced tightline nymphing tactics uh, to Czech, Polish, French, Spanish, and American nymphing techniques. Uh, it also talks about conventional indicators fishing the extremes. So that would be uh, shallow water, cold water, high water, and wind casting. So definitely another book I would recommend if you're looking under the surface. Uh, last we have Fly Patterns for Still Waters by Phil Rowley. I would recommend this book for anyone who is new to still water or lake fishing uh, or anyone who just finds lakes difficult. In this book he explains the link between understanding food sources and trying to choose an um, effective fly pattern to imitate these food sources. He covers practically everything from coronamids, scuds, damselflies, leeches, mayflies, caddisflies, water boatmen and back swimmers, uh, terrestrials, beetles, forage fish and even snails. So if you find this book in your travels it's another one I absolutely recommend picking up and giving a read. Now just one more thing I would like to touch upon before I wrap this up is in regard to reading books versus finding everything on the internet. Uh, books in my opinion at least are a little more reliable source of information than the things you would find on the internet uh, mainly because they have been reviewed before publishing and the information in books also stays around for a lot longer period where you may have the information on the internet changing every day or every hour um, and though I feel books are a little more reliable yes I understand the internet is just more conventional these days um, I also know there are quite a few people out there who believe the information in some of these books I mentioned is outdated and they can't learn anything from them that they can't just Google or YouTube. Um, I feel that could be a yes and a no. Um, in a new digital world where everything is at your fingertips, I feel books can help you be a little more connected to both the sport and the authors. And it may just be my opinion again, but I feel if you really like and respect the authors of these books, then why not support them and pick up a copy? After all, they put a mountain of effort behind everything they write. Uh, a good example of that actually is uh, The Trout Highway by Barry Mitchell. Now just imagine how many years it took him to locate, fish, and document all the places he wrote about, especially for his magazine. I mean, a good portion of information in all these books I mentioned is still relevant in today's world, so why not give it a chance? And again, it may just be my two cents, but maybe the younger generation just isn't interested in reading books, which will bring me to a future episode in fly fishing and the internet. Um, I would like to thank everyone for watching this episode of Fish on Alberta. Um... Stay tuned for more Tips and Tricks episodes. Tight lines, everyone.